beings, welcome to episode 380 of Good Luck High Five. That's right, you're listening to a podcast that's for you, no matter where in your home you are playing Magic the Gathering. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And we are finally recording this week's episode after many, what seems like years of technical difficulties. Yes, we had we had actual years of technical difficulties occurring. Yeah, but we managed to, you know, get it to you on time. Mm-hmm. Your computer was being uncooperative. Yes, I'm recording in the office now, which you can see if you're watching the video version of this podcast, mm-hmm. because my computer, I don't know how else to say it other than it suffered a, a sudden electronic death many times and come like <laughs> completely exploded yeah. with, a, with a really scary sound in my headphones every yeah. time we tried to record on that computer. Like it's still alive. It still works, but um, it would not. It absolutely refused to record this show. I had to be, I was on the, I was on the receiving end of like, on multiple, like multiple hangups. It was really, it was really, really distressing. distressing. It was very rude. It was quite rude was, to hang up oh, on Megan man. that many times. It was really hurtful. I honestly can't believe that I'm still taking your Google calls at this point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but we figured it out. Uh, and the computer at the office uh, is resilient and well record. Yeah. So here we are. Um, knock on wood. Knock on wood. I've got a wooden desk here. It's, you know, the kind that comes from Ikea. So it's just like wood powder that's been pressed into a desk-like shape. But I'm going to count it. I'm going to count it. Wood (laughs) powder. Well, isn't that what it is? I mean, basically, yeah. (laughs) I think it's like slightly more substantial than a powder, but like not much. (laughs) Uh, In the episode this week, uh, we're going to take a deeper dive into standard and into draft because we have now a lot more information about what the shape of both of the formats look like. Mm -hmm. And you might be like, what? The shape of a draft format? Yes. What we mean is there's lots of cool decks you can draft and we're going to tell you how to draft them. Is it a circle? Is it a square? Is it, you know, a hexagon? A parallelogram, perhaps? Yeah. A rhombus? A trapezoid? Rhombus is my favorite shape name. Ooh, it is a good name, right? Rhombus. I would name a pet rhombus. Like what kind of pet? I would name a dog Rhombus. (laughs) That's a cute dog name. (laughs) I would definitely name a gerbil Rhombus. Yeah, oh, a, Rhombus is a really good gerbil name. It would have to be a fat gerbil, though. No skinny gerbil yes. can be named Rhombus. I mean, no skinny gerbils. Exist, probably. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I'm anti-skinny oh. <laughs> Yeah, so am I. So am I. Yeah, we're both, like, firmly anti, anti-skinny gerbil. I have a friend who has pet frogs, and uh, I called one of them very fat the other day, and he was quite offended, and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying you're a negligent frog owner and that you're overfeeding your frogs. I'm saying, good job. I like this fat frog. (laughs) (laughs) I want it to be fat. Turns out they just are fat. Yeah, I just I I want it to be chubby. I like my animals chubs and I like Mm -hmm. um, my Christmas trees chubby too. That's just how it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's check in on your worm water, Megan, before we get into the meat of the show, because I know people are yes. waiting with bated breath to see how it worked. Um, you know, so far as like, I'm pretty sure that um, my fungus gnat infestation is on the decline. Um, so I would say like generally successful, I think um, there's still like a couple. I had to put out like some sticky paper to like get them. Um but yeah, you know, I think generally the warm water has been a success. You can see this plant right here in the background, which unfortunately is still dying anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to, it doesn't know it yet, but its days are numbered. Oh, poor I'm plant. I'm going to replace that sucker. Cover its ears. You might start to get, like the plant might start to attack you. Like what's the name of that movie? The Happening. Oh man, The Happening. That's what I was also thinking. Spoiler alert, everybody. Sorry. I mean... That movie. I just like, saved spoil- you all Spoiler it. alert, it's bad. Yeah, quick story time. I saw the happening in theaters, if you can believe that. I do. When it came out, and I've never had quite an experience like seeing the happening in theaters, because if you don't know, it's just it's just utterly terrible, and it gets utterly <laughs> terrible pretty quickly. And um, when people re- realize what the plot is, which is that plants are attacking humans, through spores yeah. or something like that and making them kill yeah. themselves. But um, the audience all got on board 
you know, it was not a situation where people like walked out there like this movie sucks. We're out of here. It was that the in, uh, entire audience got on board with it being terrible, and we had this lovely communal experience of it shifting from being like we're watching a horror movie together to we're watching an utter piece of trash, and we're gonna have a great <laughs> time while we do it. And everyone started making fun of the movie. People started clapping and applauding and laughing at it, and it was just great to see that shift. You know, and, and people yeah. still have fun at the movie despite it being just like really really bad. Um, but we. <laughs> We had a great time anyway so that's my yeah. happening story so hopefully your plan doesn't do that to you megan uh yeah i really hope not i mean i don't know that it's capable of much right now because it's just having such a rough time and i tried to save it while we're having like a quarantine update like i am really invested right now i have another plant in in another room that's like growing gangbusters it's doing so good but the problem is is that i think it's doing too good and it's growing too fast um and it needs like a little bit of pruning to help it like be like hey buddy you know like chill out a little bit but i just feel so bad cutting any leaves off because <laughs> i'm like it worked so hard on them i know but you cut your own hair i know but like that's different isn't it i don't know think of it like the tree's hair and it just needs a little haircut it does need a little haircut and I, I just feel, you know, like that's just where I am. I'm just very emotionally invested in my plant. What if you took that other sick plant and brought into the room with the good plant to show it like this is an example? Just to be like, hey, in case you need, in case you need a successful plant to look at. A role model. But like the thing is, is that there is in this room another successful plant oh. that has had greater challenges than the plant that's not doing well. <laughs> Because my cat liked to eat the other plant. Because <laughs> my cat liked to eat the other plant. You can actually, see, I can, I can show you right now. See, now it's in a little hanging basket. Cute. Because I had to hang it up because the cat bit it all the time. And despite the fact that the cat would not leave this plant alone, it is doing great. So wow. what are you doing over here? What are you doing? You don't even have the challenges of a cat biting you all the time. And yet... And yet, this is a great metaphor for like humanity, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, the people, the people that are getting bitten by cats all the time are doing the best. <laughs> well, this conversation has turned strange. I yeah. mean, I guess it started strange. Um, yeah. But yeah, hope you all are out there in listener land are doing as well as can be expected in um, in this quarantine time. Mm -hmm. I saw a great meme the other day that I sent to Megan, which was, you know, normally we start emails with like, hey, what's up or whatever. And now we start them with, so how I hope your family is in good health, which was like yes. from it was Mr. Darcy from a Jane Austen movie. Yes. Uh, so we, we hope your family is in good health, listeners. Um, yes. Uh, we, we thank you, especially for keeping Megan and I in good health during these times by mm -hmm. continuing your support of our shows, both the upkeep and here, good luck, high five and our YouTube channel and just being like, Hey, we're here with you. We support you. Thank you for being with us during these times. And thank you audience for being with us as well. If you want to become a member of our family and help support us during these tough times, you can head over to patreon.com slash GLHF magic and become a patron for any dollar amount whatsoever. Even a buck a month goes a really long way. You can be a member of our discord, get access to that for five bucks a month, which is our squirrel level. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's continued to put that support out through these difficult times because it's meant it's meant so much to us to see everybody like having our back because hopefully you know that we've got yours as well yeah, yeah. thank you as well to our sponsor card kingdom uh card kingdom.com slash glhf um it's just so amazing that even during a time you know when they're you know their operations have been interrupted uh card kingdom is still going out of their way to support all of their content creators um that they you know in the same way that they always have and it means so much to us. And so we hope that when you are looking to purchase all of the things that you need to play magic at home these days, uh, that you head on over to Card Kingdom because what a what a lovely bunch of people, truly. What a lovely bunch of coconuts. Yes. <laughs> Deedly D. <-dee. laughs> there it is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, we're going to talk about Standard and some new cool decks we've seen mm -hmm. floating around in the ether as well as some really competitive ones. We talked about this on the show last week, but there's been a bunch that have kind of grown yes. up out of the ground that we didn't want you to miss out on. Things have already changed in the course of a single week. 
um, the Obosh deck, which was, you know, just too hot to handle last week. It's, it's like just now, Obosh who? I know. I tried to play it and literally my computer started on fire. It was very hot to handle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But these days, uh, you know, you... Obosh shows up to a party and everyone's like, what are you doing here? This is awkward. I'm actually playing an Obosh deck on Arena right now, but it's not a sacrifice Obosh deck, which is what it was kind of known for uh, in its first iteration. We'll tell you about that. That's a little teaser for you a little bit later because the deck's doing something totally different. Well, not totally, but pretty different. Um, But there's a new there's a new hotness in town, Megan, and it is taking over like a virus. Oh, I'm sad I made that comparison. (laughs) I regret everything. Uh, it's taken no. over like um, a weed, like a weed, yes. like a murder hornet. Oh, my God. I was going to ask you about murder hornets, Megan, but I didn't want to because I knew you would be scared of them. Yes, obviously I am. I'm terrified. They're enormous and I love spending time outside. How dare they? They're the size of a human being. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. They're the size of a person. I was reading about. I was reading about them, and uh, like the paragraph was like they have the pincers so they can decapitate, you know, yes. other bees. And I was like, oh my god, could they decapitate a human if enough of them work together? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is obviously yes. Oh my of god! Of course they can. Of course they can. Their stingers are the size of swords. If I saw one in real life. I would actually die of fear, and that would be it. That would be my life. A murder hornet would kill me. It wouldn't even have to touch me. I would just have to no, see it. You would just be too spooked. Too well, spooked. Tell you what else I'm spooked about, Megan. This just got Yorian fires. <laughs> we finally named the deck that we've been teasing for five minutes now. Uh, yeah. Yes. Do you know what the first time, the first couple of times that I played against this, I was just like, "What is what's what's happening? Like, what's going on here?" And then. Right, because it would just, like, I would think it was just a regular fires list, right? It would, like, have Karuga as the companion, and I'd be like, okay, normal things are happening. They played, like, a Teferi. They played a, a fires, but then they'd be like, here's Luca. Oh, by the way, all your stuff is mine now. Yeah, so the the new hotness in Standard right now, it took down the Magic Fest online tournament this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Just Sky, Yori, and Fires. So we're still doing fires. Three copies in the yeah. top eight. Um, the winner was Oliver Tu, um, former Rookie of the Year. Um, yep. And yeah, so we've had Fires with Karuga. We talked about it before. Now we're mm-hmm. playing Fires with Yorian. But the b- other big addition is Luca, the Planeswalker, is in this deck now. So Megan, tell yeah. me ab- about... Oh yeah, that's what I meant to say as the companion, not Karuga, Yorian. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> the way this deck works is you're you're playing... You know, the you like we said, the usual like set set of things to help, you know, search your deck. You you have like omen of the sea, um, to go and, you know, like do some scrying, draw some cards. Um, you have Shatter the Sky to help keep the board clean. You have Elspeth Conquers Death to deal with some pesky permanence. Uh, but the real thing that you're looking to do is you're going to try and make one creature you just need to you just need to get one out there uh you have birth of Miletus that can do that you have shark typhoon that can do that and you have mytho mythos of Aluna, which can also do that um and so you just get one creature out there and then you play luca and you minus two luca and the only so the minus two says exile target creature you control then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order the only creature in this deck is asian of treachery so oh, so gross so, so gross like, you're just going to hit an agent of treachery and then you steal something of theirs and then do you know what if they don't kill luca you can just do it again because Luca starts out with five loyalty minus, and that's a minus two. So they can do it twice in a row, or they can just like they played their agent of treachery, and then like next turn they can play Yor- Yorian, their companion, and like flicker that agent of treachery. Oh my god! And then steal all your stuff again. Yeah, I you know I've played against this a number of times, uh, and every time I'm like, okay, surely they won't have what they need when they need it because the deck is 80 cards because of Yorian's uh, companion drawback. No, yes. it just doesn't no, happen because there's so many ways for them to draw cards and scry. 
Yeah. So being able to flicker stuff like Elspeth yeah. Conquers Death, like Omen of the Sea, Omen of the Sun, whatever, they're just going to find yeah. what they need whenever they need it. And that's part of it, right? Is that they like they don't always have to necessarily have the combo because they have ways to just stall you out for long enough to get it. Yeah, to Fairy Time Raveler being in this list is just like a classic. We're playing mm -hmm. Narset to be able to find stuff that we need too. It just feels kind of inevitable, honestly. Yeah, it really, it really does. And like, I don't, I don't know what to do about this. <laughs> that is the big question. Right? Like, what? What, what are we do doing do? about it? I don't know. Like, I guess there are worlds in which an aggro deck can out aggro this before it can do its thing. But you have to be p pretty aggro be specifically because of Teferi. Yes, that is true. That is true. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here like, well, OK, I'm uh, the deck I'm playing is aggressive. Is it aggressive enough? Not always like this is why. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is what makes me think like um, maybe mono red can come back. But even that I don't think is yeah. fast enough, honestly, um, because we're running four copies of Shadow of the Sky in this list. Again, we have yeah. Teferi. We have ways to gain life uh, with Omen of the Sun. Um, I feel like, <laughs> yeah, I just don't know. You know, Boro Cycling made it into the top eight and it made it into the finals where it did lose to the deck, but it did make it into the finals. So, like, maybe there are times. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, this deck not running any main deck counter spells is is a problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, bec Because of the cycling deck, being able to get them game one. It has a better game game two uh, because we have yeah. stuff like Mystical Dispute um, and Ether Gust to save our bones. Um, if, if, that should, <laughs> <laughs> if that should happen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think this deck is super, super strong. And I, somebody much smarter than, than I needs to figure out a way to beat it because this was 45% of the field in the Magic Fest oh. online weekend championship. 45%. That is oh. bonkers. Oh boy. <laughs> and do you want to know what the number one card played in the tournament was non-land? What? And we're not counting cards on the sideboard, everybody, because that's yeah. a mystical dispute, obviously. Uh, it is to Fairy Time Raveler, so... I believe that. Yeah. So Teferi is still not that. going anywhere, which is also like. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's not that long until rotation. <laughs> we can't start that. We can't start that. There must be a way, Megan. There must be a way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So let's I'm... talk about like other decks that we can play. We're going to ignore yeah. Jessica Yorian Fairs because that deck is so oppressive and so good. I'm just going to ignore you know it for what? the time being. If Fine, it's true that you can play it if that's what you want to do. You want to be that person, you know, be our guest and it. don't listen to our show anymore. Just kidding. Uh, be, <laughs> be, our guest, the be our guest. <laughs> but <laughs> let's talk about other decks that are much more fun and still competitive. Like you can still yes. play these on the ladder. It's not like you're going to lose all the time. Definitely not. You're not going to run yeah. into Jessica Yorian Fires every second. I certainly haven't when I've been playing some stuff. Um, yeah, the although it's been more and more it's been more and more the higher you go for sure yeah. um let's talk about uh simic mutate this deck's yeah. super fun we've both been playing this yeah um and it is such a good time so this has umori the collector as a companion which is the four five for two um hybrid green black two hybrid green black or sorry two two generic and then hybrid green black hybrid green black uh and it as Umori the Collector enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. And its companion function is each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. So in this case, that is creature, obviously. <laughs> um, and yeah, you can just do... You can put and raise four runners into play pretty quick. Um, you can put Eluna Apex of Wishes into play pretty quick. Like, you can do some really cool stuff with Eluna, with Auspicious Starix. It's just a cool deck. I think this deck is super fun. It is yeah. really smashy. Um, if you like to smash with big creatures, which, uh, who doesn't? Um, <laughs> you ramp yourself really easily to playing cards like a Boreal Grazer and Paradise Druid. Mm -hmm. And those are both cheap non-humans. So you can, um... Uh, mutate onto them fairly easily. Yeah. You're also playing Polywog Symbiote, AKA Baby Godzilla, to make your mutate creatures cheaper. So Migratory Greathorn 
mutate cost becomes one in a green with yeah. baby Godzilla out there. And then you go find more lands. You ramp yourself up. You're able to cast a Starix, which puts permanents into play. Just puts them into play. So does a Luna. Yep. Just slaps them onto the battlefield. And then you ramp yourself uh, right into a big end race forerunners. And you're like, <gasps> get huffed. Oh, uh, there are times when it's just like, it's amazing how quickly, like you can, you can throw so many Hail Marys with this deck. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you can be behind, and then you're just like, all right, here we go, like, and raise yeah, forerunners. Exactly. You, like, just, you slap something, like, you mutate something onto a Luna, and it's just like, you hit an Ed raise forerunners, and you're like, well, GG. Do you know what? Like, GG. Here come them big pigs. The big pigs are coming on in, and sometimes you're you're just mutating not for any value, like uh, Parcel, Be- yeah. Parcel Beast. The only reason this card's, I mean, like, it's, it's activated ability is fine, which lets you look at the top card of your library. This activate ability is actively sick, Maria, but okay. But I like I will use it one time. You know, the reason I mutate with it is because I want to get another activation of a Luna or of, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, 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 auspicious Star X. Yeah. yeah. That's really what I'm care. That's really what I care about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, you know, fair enough. I, I find that like, it's just a really good ability every once in a while. If you've like stalled out a little bit. Yeah. You know, if you need to not draw lands off the top. <laughs> Let's talk about another mutate deck that's kind of gaining a little bit of traction now, too, and does some kind of cool stuff in a similar vein. Demir Mutate Flash. Yeah. I have not seen this one, Maria. You're going to have to tell me about this. Okay, so this one uh, popped up on the Arena Decklist account on Twitter, which if you don't follow it and you like to like learn about cool decks, you definitely should. Um, props to whoever is running this account for uh, finding these cool decks. Um, this one is similar kind of concept, playing cards like Stone Coil, Serpent, and Knight of the Ebon Legion <laughs> to be your early cards to mutate onto. We're still, we've still got Amori as our companion. We're still running Baby Godzilla. But the difference is the cards that we're mutating with are slightly, uh, slightly trying to do a different thing. We're not trying to ramp. We're not trying to cast big pigs. What we're trying to do is cast stuff like Sea Dash or Octopus, uh, at flash which has flash to get in there draw extra cards um and cards like uh pouncing shore shark which is a tempo play to bounce stuff back to your opponent's hands so you can get in to draw more cards Dirt what a random <laughs> very what a random. random card to see in standard very random i my favorite card in this deck is actually dirge bat which um you usually just cast it for two black black or um cheaper if you've got umori out but the yeah. idea is you you mutate onto the dirge bat. You don't cast the dirge bat for its mutate cost, and then yeah. you just basically kill whatever you want to kill, um, yeah. blow up any permanent, um, non land permanent, which is pretty awesome. And then you've got cards that care about flash stuff like Slither Wisp and Cunning Knight. What what is it called? Cunning Knight Bonder, which um, get, like anything that you have flash can't be countered. So it's like a Trixier kind of build. Brazen Borrower in here too. A Trixier kind of mutate build, which can be really fun. And the person who tweeted about this um, got did get to Mythic with it. So there you go. It can be done. Wait, what are you whispering in the microphone, all creepy like? <laughs> I was just I was just whispering Slither. Oh, Slither Wisp. Slither, Slither Wisp. wisp. <laughs> Slither Wisp. So there's another option. If you like uh, mutating yeah. and being a little um, little more sneaky about it, that's that that's deck a fun is pretty one. sick. Yeah. That, it's, you know, it's, what, a, what a real rando. It's a real rando. What a real rando. Okay. Uh, coming up next, I've played against this a couple of times, and Maria, it is up your alley. It sure because is. Because... It is white black auras. Yeah. So you'll know that your opponent is on this when they slap down a turn one all see it of life's bounty. Uh-huh. And you're like, you're like, hello? Hello? Good day. What? Hello? <laughs> Emote? Hello? Hello? Uh, also, this deck has Loris of the Dream Den as a companion. So that's the one everything in your deck or all non-land permits need to have a two CMC or less or less. Yeah. Less than three. So two or less. <laughs> That's on both ways. Yeah, those are both ways to say that. Um, oh, sorry. It just means it's just permanence it's because you can play Call of the Death Dweller in this deck. Yes. Uh, which is a spell that costs three. Um, so, yeah, you're just, you know, you're just making some big old attackers with uh, cards like All That Glitters. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, this deck is um, 
reminiscent of a deck that we saw Ken Yukihiro popularize at a big event a few months ago. Um, and I was playing it in standard, previous standard. It wasn't quite tier one or anything like that, but a lot of people who are pretty smart about this stuff think that this uh, deck might be something to contend with in the future. It's pretty difficult to play. Um, because you've got a lot of really, really tricky decisions to make involving stuff like um, I'll see it of life's bounty and when to sacrifice it to give your creatures yeah. protection, um, to get in for lethal damage or to save them for something or whatever. You have to know the metagame pretty well, just like any Boggle-style deck, to be able to play it optimally. All that glitters can give your creatures plus a million, plus a million to swing in if you have enough enchantments mm -hmm. and artifacts out there. Uh, and Ephemia the Cacophony, one of my favorite cards... Um, from Theros Beyond Death in this deck as well to help bring stuff back from the graveyard. But something that's really fun with Lurus in this deck is actually getting cards like Deadweight back from the graveyard continually. Yeah. <laughs> boom, 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 kill your stuff. Playing, you know, like this deck just, you know, takes a big, big hot dump over any deck that's trying to be aggressive. <laughs> Um, the life gain is great. Uh, yeah, anything that's trying to kill you quick, this deck is like, no, mm -hmm. you just yeah. not. It's not going to happen. I also have played against versions of this deck that have Cruel Celebrant, which is the black-white 1-2. Um, when a creature you control dies, you gain a life and an opponent loses a life. And then they had, um, there's like, it's a one mana black aura, like something Kaya, Kaya's, Kaya's I ghost form. Yes, Kaya's ghost form that they like they play Loris and then they slap it on there. And the way it works is that you have to have two kill spells in a row for Loris. Yep. Because otherwise, it's just like, well, like the ghost form means that Loris comes back and then they can just put it back on it. I love on it. On their next turn. I love it. It was, yeah. And it's, you know, and so like things can die, but then they're just like, well, put it play right it back again. into play. Just play it again. Which is Get also all really great triggers. with the Elsaid in this deck too, right? Because you can yeah. sacrifice, it gives pro protection as long as Loris survives, bring it back, do it again. Yeah. Yep. Really exactly. tricky deck. Exactly. This Whew. was played by Eli Cassis in the, the the list we're referencing in the last Magic Fest online weekend championship, and he did pretty well with it too. So, I think it might be the real deal. Yeah. Um, speaking of the real deal, I've played against this one quite a bit too. This is a new version of Obosh, which is a mono black Obosh deck. I love this deck. This is my current favorite, Megan. Um, I played Ooh. this cribbing list from e uh, Eric Froelich, who is playing this once again in the weekend championship. And we're we're not sacrificing with Obosh in this list. No, no, no. We're just trying to get in for as much damage as quickly as possible, which you all know is my brand. Um, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do that with Gutter Bones. The guttery buttery boy is in this deck. Mm -hmm. and of course, all of our creatures have odd CMCs because that's what Obosh cares about, and he's gonna double their damage once he hits the battlefield. Serrated score. Yeah. Champion is going to come in, which is going to nug people for four when Obosh is in play. Once they die, Whisper Squad, go find some more squad, get in for two with Obosh on the field. Hunted Nightmare, which is a giant four five with Menace. That's one black black from this set. Um, when it ETBs, it gives a, a death touch counter to an opponent's creature, but very likely they don't have any creatures, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Murderous Rider uh, kills stuff if you need to. There's just two copies in the list. Rotting Regisaur. That's right. Oh. It has an odd casting cost. That's, That's right. my favorite ad here. That is spicy. It'll hit for 14 uh, if you've got Obosh in play. And my Ooh. favorite inclusion, Heraldic Banner, which gives creature of a, of a chosen color plus one plus so, and also ramps you into Obosh. I love wow. this mono black list. This, this is aggro. Yes, it is aggro with a, cop, with a capital A. The only interaction it runs is duress and drill bit, which I think is pretty yeah. smart because if you're able to take key cards, like wilderness wreck out of somebody's hand or whatever, it can kind of mm -hmm. like make those decks a little bit unplayable if they've kept a hand that only has one or two answers yep. to stuff. And you're just like, well, see you later. You're going to be dead in, you know, three turns. So yeah, I mean, it does have murderous rider too. Yeah. And two copies of murderous rider. Um, Castle Lock Twain to be able to draw some cards as well in this list. Um, I love it. It's my yeah, fave. This is this is spicy. Current fave. Current fave. <laughs> just you know, just steamroll them. Speaking of monocolored decks, another one that I wanted to highlight is mono green, which yeah. um, has been popularized by a streamer and he played in the tournament again last weekend named Rint on Arena. Um, this one, once again, we are smashing face and we're just doing it with green cards because it can go very, mm -hmm. very fast. Yes. So it starts out, you know, down at one with Pelt Collector, who's still around. Wow. <laughs> do, do I remember that? 
I mean, yes, because people play it all the time. But I think if you were to ask me in a vacuum, is Pelt Collector still legal? I would have been like, no. Yes, so would I. One million years ago. So would I. I would say the exact same thing. Like, no way. Pelt Collector is not real. One billion years ago when Pelt Pelt Collector came out. But yeah, Pelt Collector, uh, real rando, Bark Hydrol. I know. Bark Hydrol able to give stuff hexproof for a single man and remove a counter from it. So relevant. Only itself, right? Yeah, only itself. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, it gives itself. But it's a 3-3 on 2 also. Yeah, that's true. And shifting Ceratops at 4. Nice. Yeah. And uh, questing Beast, of course. And then you you get cool stuff at the top end with Vivian Arcbow Ranger coming on in. Yorvo can make things huge really fast. Mm-hmm. We got a couple copies of the Great Henge in here to draw you cards, gain you life in the late game. Yeah. yeah. I love Stone Coil Serpent in lists like this because basically, you know, you're just playing it super early to be able to mutate onto it with like stuff like Gem Razor, which is in this list as well. Yeah. yeah. Or you can save it and it can be a huge threat later on in the game that honestly some decks have kind of a little bit of trouble dealing with because there's protection from multicolored. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's a thing too. <laughs> yeah. Man, the Great Henge. What a card that doesn't, it's like, it's got the star power, baby, but it just hasn't like, it's not as famous as it ought to be because holy cow that card can do work Oko kind of like sent it packing which is a little sad early yeah. on so i'm happy to see it end up in some lists because i think the card is really cool because there have been times when i've been playing against a green list and i'm like oh things are gonna be fine and then they they land the great henge and i'm like never mind they're gonna draw a million cards and all their creatures are uh, so big yeah I agree. I think um, I'm happy for it to be for it to be back around. It's super great once you once you lock it down. Unfortunately, cards like Elspeth Conquers Death, yeah. you know, they hate on it pretty hard. Um, to fairy whatever, but uh, but yeah, anytime it sticks, it wins yeah. wins you the game most often. It is a it is a very powerful card. You know what we did not mention? What uh, um, have you played against any of these like Kahira? beastie decks no what one have you played against i've been playing against a lot of people who just play it's like they go arboreal grazer okay because it's a little beastie into kahira into like questing beast oh sick. and they're hitting you for like five with questing beast that sounds like a good curve yeah it is sick and it can really it can get you sometimes Oh, that sounds sweet. I'll have to look at, look up some Kahira decks. I've seen uh, yeah. some decks just kind of randomly playing it because it fits their conditions. And they're like, well, you got to play Companion because, like, who cares? It's yeah. just an eighth card in your opening hand. But, yeah. These ones are, like, specifically, like, aggro beast decks. Okay, cool. Um, that are playing Kahira. And I just remembered it right now or else I would have looked it up beforehand. But, yeah, if you're also looking for something like aggro um, and creature-based. Okay, yeah. Um, I did hear Check somebody say that Kahira could make um, cats decks in modern um, viable. Cats? I want to see some tribal kitties. Tribal kitties in modern. That sounds great. Or what about yeah. Pioneer? Maybe tribal kitties is good enough in Pioneer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, who knows? You know what's weird, Megan? Is like Pioneer was to be like the, the hallmark <laughs> format at all of these players tours coming up. Oh, boy. And now, like, because they're not happening, at least not anytime soon, Pioneer, to me, has just kind of, like, people aren't talking about it as much. Yeah, it's faded into the background for sure. But I'm sure there's tons of sweet Pioneer decks out there right now. Yeah. Um, I think White Black Auras, I was searching for this deck on MTG Goldfish, and I found a lot of Pioneer's Pioneer lists running White Black Auras. So, yeah, it's hot and it's hot in Pioneer right now. Yeah, maybe we'll take us take some time in the future to talk some more about Pioneer because I was loving it, you know, yeah. and then the world happened <laughs> or didn't. And then the world stopped happening. Yeah, stopped happening. Yeah. So anyway, something to keep our eyes on in the future for sure, too. Let's talk about draft. And uh, we've got some some words to say about this. Ikoria draft. It's I, I'm still having a blast with it same and do you know what i was having i was losing a lot yeah and now i turned the corner and i'm winning some so okay. that's nice what was your <laughs> what change did you make i have literally no idea maria don't ask me <laughs> <laughs> okay okay it just do you know what here's actually here's my answer i go out of my way to draft busted cards and just make it work i mean i am here for that i try and do that every draft 
Yeah. I'm such a, what is it, Timmy, who likes to play with the big splashy cards? I don't know. Oh, when yeah. It, when it comes to drafting, I'm a major, I'm a major Timmy Tammy. Do you know what? It's happened now that, like, if I get past an ultimatum, I'm just going to make it work. I open ultimatums at an alarming rate. Oh, man. I don't open them, but I get past them. And every time I'm just like, well, we're going to take this and we're going <laughs> to shove it in here. But is it even good enough? You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes like, yes. I'm like, the payoff just isn't there. Like, the Jeskai one. I've been so disappointed with that sometimes. Oh, man. I I cast... Uh, which one is the Jeskai one? Oh, I, okay. I didn't cast the Jeskai one. I cast the Teamer one, which is where you look at the top five cards and you can you put any number of them into play. Okay. And then you put the rest into your hand. Yeah. Um, I played it and I also I copied it with Lutri. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That's it was, awesome. Right? Like what I'm saying, like. When I say I go out of my way to draft busted cards, I mean, I'm going all the way out of my way. <laughs> all the way or no way, baby. Yes. That's exactly. sweet. Exactly. Did you get, what was, when, when did you get Lutri? Um, I think I picked up Lutri. Do you know what? Lutri wasn't initially my companion because that deck, oh, that deck was so busted, Maria. <laughs> that deck had Lutri. It had the, that, the teamer ultimatum. Um, and it had Garuda. Oh, sick. Because I initially started, I like drafted Garuda first pick. And then I went, to, I was in a couple of picks and then I got past the teamer one, yes. like in, in pack one. And yes. I was just like, well, never mind. We're abandoning even CMCs because like, I'm going to draft this <laughs> and I'm going to play it. And then the next, I think in pack two is when I got Lutri and I was like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Lutri. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, uh, it was that deck was I mean, it was absurd. It was so good. So let's talk about um, this concept that we wanted to focus on for this segment while we were talking about sweet things you can do in draft, which is, you know, you'll see at the beginning of a new set, a lot of people talking about card pick orders and when you should take this card, what are the best cards to pick? And, oh, this is super powerful blood curdle i'm always going to take it or whatever mm -hmm. but it's the concept of instead of drafting that way drafting a deck instead of drafting cards so yeah. what do we mean megan because this is a format and, and right, right not all formats lend themselves to this right but this is certainly one that does where you are looking at a draft synergy a draft archetype that is built into the format and you're specifically drafting that synergy. Right. It's like you're building yourself a constructed deck as yes. best you can while you're in the draft itself, which you normally see a lot in master sets because yeah. master sets are built to uh, reward high synergy drafting mm -hmm. with very powerful cards. And this set just lends itself to that so very well that we think that drafting yeah. a deck in this format is what you should kind of be focusing on as opposed to I'm just taking the most car powerful card, like traditional drafting style. I'm going to say corset drafting style. Yeah. It also makes it even more important to be able to read draft signals because you need to be able to figure out which of those deck lanes is open. Exactly. So let's so, talk about maybe the most powerful deck or the most popular deck right now to yes, draft. Which, which is cycling. Cycling, yeah. It's yeah. no surprise here. Um, if you're playing draft at all, you know that this is regarded to be like one of the most powerful and best decks in the format, um, yeah. which is core colors red, white. Although I have to say, I don't know if it's suffering from being overdrafted. Yeah, it could at definitely this point, could be. Or if it's suffering from the fact that it was very, it was better back when the format was a little bit slower. Whereas I think, and like people were being more okay with like just really taking their time yeah. at the beginning of the game. Whereas now, even if you're drafting one of the more long-term syner synergy strategies, I think people are still now more conscious of making sure that they have early drops yeah so i think that this deck is worse than it was i will say that yeah i think that's a good point it is overdrafted so you do need to be careful if you're trying to go into this because you could end up with a deck that's just super medium minus you know like yeah. you just don't get the cards you need but if you're very lucky you could make this deck come together and what you need is um basically all of the cards I care about cycling, which are cards like Dranith Stinger, Dranith Healer, Flourishing Fox, the same cards yeah. you see literally played in standard. Um, Snarecaster. Snarecaster. 
Absolutely. Uh, as many as you can get your hands on. Mm -hmm. And then any card that says cycling one. I don't care yeah. what color it is. Any card. Any color. Any color. Any, yeah. Any color. Cycling one, you put it in your deck. And um, you only need to run, some, some people say, as low as 12 lands. Um, yeah. The, I think the, the range is between 12 and 14. Um, yeah. Which is... You're yeah. just going to see so many of them. Yeah. And also not to... Um, not to digress too much, but like we haven't really talked about this much in this format, but if you are playing, even if you're not in this deck, but you're playing a deck that has a lot of cycling, you need to be looking at your land count because your cycling cards, if you think that you're going to be cycling them about half the time, that's not a full spell. Right, exactly. And so if you've been, if you've been drafting and you're like, why am I, if you've been struggling to win games, um, I think... I think that that is one of the biggest things that it's easiest to overlook in a format like this is that if you think, oh, I have 23 spells, but actually your 23 spells include four spells that you're cycling over half the time, it's like you're going, you're going to flood because those aren't spells. Exactly. That's a great point. Um, even not in the cycling deck, even if your deck has just in incidental yeah. cycling, you need to think about it for sure. Especially, Absolutely. especially if you're playing best of one. Yeah. For sure. Because you don't want to you don't want to flood. It's going to be a real bummer. Yeah. You're already going to have an opening hand with lands in it. That's guaranteed in best yeah. of one because of the shuffling algorithm. Yeah. Um, the other but, thing I just wanted to mention about this deck is I've yeah. seen a couple of pros tweet um, that people are not taking Zenith flares. Look, what are you doing? What are you doing? Take, Take the it. Zenith flare. Take it. Also, they must not be in the same drafts that I am, though, because I never see a Zenith flare these days. <laughs> I know. It's like a rare thing. Um, but if you happen to see it and you're anywhere yeah. near this deck, whoosh, snap just, it up. Or, yes. or take it, pack one, pick one, and just be like, we're doing take it. Take that thing. And yeah. then go you, all in. This deck, I would say, you know, I, need is a strong word, but it's like real close to needing a copy of Zenith flare. Yeah, I think you're right. So, Especially if you don't get as many tappers as you need. Yep, exactly. Uh, so, uh, Maria. Yes. Speaking of uh, decks that are up your alley, which we have done some of today. Yeah. Uh, this deck is kind of fun and I think is your style, which is the Vigilance deck. Yeah, this deck is pretty sweet. Um, this one I kind of accidentally drafted on the first day of the format or day zero <laughs> when we did our early release stream. But yeah. this deck um, is relies on Vigilance, the card Solid Footing, the card Main Serval, and Elite Herd Bonder. So let's talk about it. Basically yeah. what you're doing is you're taking as many main servals as you can get your hands on, which nobody else wants because it's a one yeah. four for two mana. <laughs> yes, exactly. Everyone else is like, oh, what? Gross. Don't care. No, okay. you want this card. The reason you want it is you're playing is also as many copies of solid footing as you can get your hands on. This card mm -hmm. is a flash aura. Love it. Where it enchants a creature, gives a creature plus one, plus one. And if the creature has vigilance, it assigns combat damage based on its toughness instead of its Ooh. power. So yeah. these little main servals are all of a sudden five fives, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is pretty sweet. And then if you get the card Elite Herd Bonder, which is an uncommon, uh, it has Vigilance. Um, at the beginning of Upkeep, you gain one life for each creature you control with Vigilance, which is a really cool little extra bonus. Yeah. What is the name of the card? Alert Herd Bonder. Sorry. Alert Herd... Oh, wait, no, that's not even right. Alert was like, Heed Bonder. Because you keep saying a word, and I'm looking at it typed on the screen the way you typed it, and I'm like, am I crazy? Alert Heed Bonder. What did I say? What did I say? Alert, al elite Herd Bonder was the first thing that you said, <laughs> which is, like, really close to being the same thing, but it's, like, also not. Oh, my God. It is... It could have... <laughs> that's so funny oh my god yeah uh, alert anyways. heed bonder <laughs> uh, yes. so yeah this is a this is a fun deck it's black white <laughs> um you can do it pretty pretty easily if you see enough servos going around and you're like this it's yeah. gonna feel here's the thing it's gonna feel underpowered when you're drafting yeah. it you're gonna be like i'm taking these one fours for common when i could be taking a sweet rare or whatever but when it plays out, it is very, very strong. And you get access to other strong cards. Like you're, you're playing Black White, so you can play Blood Curdle. You can play Dire Tactics to be able to mm -hmm. kill things if you need to as well. Um, also, our little fox friend, um, Farfinder, has Vigilance. Yes, that's right. So, you know, like slap, slap, some, uh, slap some mutates on him. And then just go to town. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
It's a super fun deck when it comes together. Don't be afraid when you're drafting because if you're anywhere near this deck, it will work out. And even though you don't have any splashy rares, it's very powerful. Yeah. Uh, up next is one that I've had a very good time drafting, which is uh, Bant Mutate, which isn't going to necessarily be all three colors, but it can dance across kind of those three in general. Like I've drafted uh, blue green versions. I've drafted blue white versions. Um, one of the key cards in this, right, is like, I think early on I was like, oh, Essence Symbiote, which is obviously still like a powerful card in a mutate deck, which is the one in a green that gives like when you mutate something, it puts a plus one plus one counter on it and you gain two life. Oh, oh yeah. But really where you want to be. Thing. Yeah. Is you want to be on the eggs. You, <laughs> you want to get those like one drop chicken. eggs. Right. And you can do things like you play this egg on one and on three, you play a Vulpakeet. And that's a four or five flyer because they both put a counter on it. <laughs> Great. I love it. Yeah. So this deck plays, I would say the most, like the thing that it feels the most like is like it's kind of tempo-y because you're just looking for early ways to get in a bunch of damage doing something like that. Like right, making a big creature nice and early. And then like Archipelagor is one of the big splashy cards of this that you like really want to pick up. I have um, because gotten of, got by that card more times than I'm willing to admit. That card is so good. I will I will abandon a color that I'm in if I get past a late archipelago. I mean, that's fair. It Because it's so good. It'll close the game out, like, pretty much instantly. Yes, exactly. Um, it is, yeah. So, like, you're going, it's a little bit all in sometimes, um, but it's it's a really fun deck. And if you have, if you have like some flyers or you have that archipelago, there's like, you want to get in that last bit of damage and there's ways to get it done. Megan, the next deck we're going to talk about, I know is your personal pet deck right now. Yes. Called Five Color Rares. And we heard a little bit yes. of a preview of this up top. <laughs> so there, this is, you know, you're like, hey, you've been talking about synergy strategies. And I'm going to argue that they, this is a, a synergy strategy is okay. what you're doing. Okay. Is that you are picking up just like every land that you can basically how but high are any, you picking them um i mean i'm i'm not gonna pick them on one but i'll pick them as early as two. Oh wow okay keep going um and like it's it's difficult because you what you do have to be disciplined because the the key space for it is like probably like five like five through eight those picks are like even five through 10 where what you need to do is if there's a land, you need to pick the land and you're going to see a card that you kind of want. That's like, it's like a good creature or something. And you need to pick the land because you're saving your non land picks for the turns when there aren't any lands in that pack. Um, obviously we're talking about dual lands here. I'm not talking about like basic forest. <laughs> FYI. Yeah, no. Because what it lets you do is then later on when people pass powerful multicolor rares, you just get to pick them. Um, so I played a draft deck last week, not last week, a couple of days ago even, that had like Shark Typhoon was my first pick. Um, but then I picked up Genesis Ultimatum, which is the Sultai one. And then I got past a late Narset in pack two. Wow. Narset. Um, that card is super powerful. Yes, exactly. Right. So I was playing and then I had like, I'm trying to think of like what else even went with those like it doesn't matter you just take whatever yeah. the best thing is exactly and then like you just want to pick like obviously you're gonna like nab like a bunch of kinds of removal and stuff like that um oh that one also had like i gotta pass a late um kogla oh sure yeah and so it's like there was a time when with genesis ultimatum like i went and got like Kogla, Shark Typhoon, and a Blood Curdle, right? And the answer, like, they get to pick two for you. Like, you get to cast two, and they get to shuffle one back in. And if you pick those three cards, there's no good answer. <laughs> I love it. I no love matter it. what happens, I'm getting some number of creatures and some number of removal spells out of that combination. <laughs> now I just really want to go draft this deck. It is so much fun. But again, like, it's... The place where you're going to be stuck is like on turn on like pick five, there's going to be a dual land and there's going to be like a solid creature, like an uncommon good creature. And you're going to pick you need to pick that land. OK, so discipline, discipline, yes, discipline and land choice. But it is you get to just you get to play 
I've probably cast more ultimatums than most people out there because I go out of my way to draft this deck. And like those cards are just good. <laughs> Basically, pack three is your payoff for being um, strict with yourself in one and two. Yeah. And I would say like, right when I, while I'm talking about being strict with yourself in one and two, if someone passes you like a rare um, or even honestly, like a, I'll say like a rare or a blood curdle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> those are the two things that you're allowed to pick over lands. Okay, great. So like, cause you'll get, you'll get payoff in the middle of pack two, right? When people who are in other colors, a few seats on the other side of you pick like, right? Like the Narset I got past pick three in pack two. And it's like, yeah, that's a payoff card because those people weren't in those colors and I'm in every color. <laughs> great. Great. Um, this next deck we mentioned on the show a couple episodes ago, I think, um, but I wanted to bring it back because it is still really sweet and to tell you how to draft it, which is the Ominous Seas deck. Um, this is the one where you're basically just doing a whole bunch of cycling. Again, you just care about mm -hmm. getting those cycling one cost cards and you pick, you pick, you need ominous seeds, of course, and you also need escape protocol, which you're both uncommon. So it's not going to come together all the time, but yeah. you know, uh, easier than, uh, drafting decks around rares, of course. Um, <laughs> So Ominous Seas works with a card called Spring Jaw Trap, which you also need for this deck to work, um, which um, lets you, anytime you cycle, to flicker something that's already on the battlefield. And your Spring Jaw Trap, you're never actually sacrificing it to get its effect. What happens with an ETB is you draw a card, so you're using this to just cycle through your, di through your library and draw cards. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, uh, Escape Protocol allows you to flicker those things. Um, and yeah. Ominous Seas is whenever you draw a card, you put a counter on it. Once you get eight counters on it, you make an 8-8 octopus um yeah so basically you're just cycling through your deck as fast as you can flickering your spring jaw trap with your escape protocol and building up your counters on ominous seas to make giant eight eight krakens mm -hmm. did i say octopus i meant kraken is it an octopus yeah. or is it a kraken i don't it's know it's a kraken. kraken it's a kraken yeah. um yeah and you just take all the cycling ever you're basically doing nothing else um and then you win the game and then you crack in with your kraken <laughs> you drafted this deck didn't you Yes, I have drafted this deck. I've also drafted, again, with the five color rare strategy, I've drafted many copies of Ominous Seas. Oh, great. It's just good. <laughs> exactly, because it's just good. Uh, this I love this deck, obviously. You just get to draw cards. Um, you also, you can draft copies of Facet Reader, which is the one in a blue, one, three human. Um, oh, yeah, that lets you loot. Yeah, yeah one, one and tap, tap to loot, which also is great for this. Um, just anything that's like that lets you put Connors on ominous C is faster. I think this deck is really sweet. Like I said on the yeah. show a couple weeks ago, I played against it and I was shocked. I was shocked once I figured out what was going on, and I was like, "Wait a second, this is the coolest draft deck I've ever seen." And I just yeah. I couldn't even be mad that I had no chance <laughs> because I was yeah. just like, "Slow clap, man, slow clap." This deck is, is really cool. Too cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last one that I wanted to mention is um, flavors of black, white, or Mardu aggro. Okay. And these specifically for me are highlighted by the card Bastion of Remembrance, which is two and a black um, or three and a black. I don't remember. Anyways, uh, for an enchantment, and it makes a one, one. But more importantly, when a creature you control dies, uh, you gain a life and an opponent loses a life. So these decks start out by being like hyper aggro, right? You want to be attack, like you want to play one drops, two drops, three drops. And you get in a bunch of early damage. And then, again, it's like that last bit of reach is Bastion of Remembrance. Right? Like, I, there have been so many times when I've played against this deck when it's just like, oh, I would have, quote unquote, stabilized at like six or something like that. Except I'm at six and they have four creatures on the board. And I have one. And it's like, oh, if they get in for a couple more points of damage and then I try and block things, like, I'm just going to die because of the Bastion of Remembrance triggers. Yeah, the, it is two in the black. I just looked it up. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really good inevitability uh, later exactly. on in the game. Um, that card is, is like quite good, and I recommend it. If you're drafting black already um, and you see that card, like absolutely pick it up. Like That reach is super valuable. I have never played with this card yet. I've always just kind of let it pass me by, so maybe I'll try it out. That sounds cool. Um, I played against it when I drafted an Obosh deck. So, and then I was telling you earlier about, I drafted a Winota dra deck that was Mardu Aggro. Yes. That was very good. <laughs> yes, Winota and Limited. I hit, like, the exact right combination of, like, non, non-human creatures, right? Like, I drafted, like, the little scorpions for that deck and boot nippers, and then, like, the three-drop, the Night Squad Commando and stuff like that. 
So I would just have, you know, it was absurd. It was very, very good. <laughs> I love it. Um, um, but yeah. So like, think about this next time you're drafting. Think about drafting a deck and not just powerful cards. Mm -hmm. Let's get some a, a, a synergy going in there. The set will reward you for it. Yeah. And if you have any cool draft decks that you've drafted that you want to show off, please tweet them at us at GLHF Magic. I've loved seeing people send us deck lists within the past few days, taking the Karuga Challenge, yeah. uh, <laughs> which, you know, usually pays off. I want to see you take in limited the hashtag Yorian Challenge. Oh, Yorian Challenge and limited. A couple of you have sent us those lists too. That is I've done extra it. sweet. <laughs> yeah, Megan's done, done it. <laughs> I'm still waiting to do it. I really want to do it. Um, yeah, so yeah. we love seeing your spicy uh, draft decks um, and standard decks for that matter if you've got mm -hmm. ones that you're like oh you didn't talk about this one this one's my favorite somebody did tweet us a gruel list which seemed pretty cool and standard yeah. so you can Absolutely. check that out in our uh, on our twitter account at GLHF Magic 2 um, lots of cool stuff to do in this format I feel like it's switching both in limited and in standard every mm -hmm. day All it the feels time. different which yeah. is absolutely absurd uh, with, with the advent of arena I found that you know the format's kind of changed over more quickly than we were even used to like on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and now yep. i'm like wh what happened yesterday might not yep. be true today hey everybody thanks for hanging out with us so much this week uh it's been a blast to talk to you about magic um we've been playing a heck of a lot of it because yeah. what else is there oh to boy. do shrug so shrug shrug much magic <laughs> Um, and it's been great to know that you're yeah. all out there listening and hanging out with us every single week. Thank you so much for being there yeah. for us. Uh, if you want to become a patron of the show, we highly encourage it. It will help us out through these tough times. It's patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Become a member of our family. Use our discord. Uh, get those sweet rewards once mm -hmm. we can start shipping them out again. We'd love to see you there. Uh, and it means a lot to us, too, in, in, um, in the time of Corona. And thank you, of course, again to Card Kingdom. Uh, make sure to head to Card Kingdom com slash glhf to buy from them when they're ready to ship again they are a fantastic company for sticking with us during these hard times we can't recommend them enough um and yeah just basically thank you for listening every week it is so great to be able to do something that you know is still having like a positive impact during these um during these weird times that we're living in now and that you're all there hopefully getting some you know happiness out of our show every week yeah thanks so much for tuning in everybody and uh, stay safe out there, friends. We'll be here for you back again next week. As always, uh, socially safe. High five. <laughs>